monolatrism or monolatry equals single, and lambda alpha tau rho epsilon iota alpha equals worship, is the recognition of the existence of many gods but with the consistent worship of only one deity. The term was perhaps first used by Julius Wellhausen. Monolatry is distinguished from monotheism, which asserts the existence of only one god, and henotheism, a religious system in which the believer worships one god without denying that others may worship different gods with equal validity. Atonism. Amenhotep IV initially introduced Atonism in year 5 of his reign, raising Aten, once a relatively obscure Egyptian solar deity representing the disk of the sun, to the status of supreme god in the Egyptian pantheon. The fifth year of his reign is believed to mark the beginning of Amenhotep IV as a construction of a new capital, Akhetaten, at the site known today as Armana. Amenhotep IV officially changed his name to Akhenaten as evidence of his new worship. In addition to constructing a new capital in honor of Aten, Akhenaten also oversaw the construction of some of the most massive temple complexes in ancient Egypt, including one at Karnak and one at Thebes. Thebes, close to the old temple of Ammon. In his ninth year of rule, Akhenaten declared a more radical version of his new religion, declaring Aten, not merely the supreme god of the Egyptian pantheon but the only god of Egypt, with himself as the sole intermediary between the Aten and the Egyptian people. Key features of Atenism included a ban on idols and other images of the Aten, with the exception of a rayed solar disk in which the rays appear to represent the unseen spirit of Aten. Artin was addressed by Akhenaten in prayers, such as the great hymn to the Artin. The details of Atenis theology are still unclear. The exclusion of all but one god and the prohibition of idols was a radical departure from Egyptian tradition. But most scholars see Akhenaten as a practitioner of monolatry rather than monotheism. As he did not actively deny the existence of other gods, he simply refrained from worshipping any but Aten. It is known that Atenism did not solely attribute divinity to the Aten. Akhenaten continued the cult of the pharaoh, proclaiming himself the son of Aten and encouraging the Egyptian people to worship him. The Egyptian people were to worship Akhenaten, only Akhenaten and Nefertiti could worship Aten directly. Under Akhenaten's successes, Egypt reverted to its traditional religion, and Akhenaten himself came to be reviled as a heretic. In ancient Israel, some historians have argued that ancient Israel originally practiced a form of monolatry or henotheism. Both Frank E. Eakin, Jr., and John J. Scullion believe Moses was a monolatrist rather than a monotheist and John Day suggests that angels are what became of the other gods once monotheism took over Israel. In the ancient Near East the existence of divine beings was universally accepted without questions. The question was not whether there is only one, Elohim, but whether there is any Elohim like Yahweh. The Shema Yisrael is often cited as proof that the Israelites practiced monotheism. It was recognized by Rashi in his commentary to Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 that the declaration of the Shema accepts belief in one God as being only a part of Jewish faith at the time of Moses but would eventually be accepted by all humanity. A similar statement occurs in Maimonides' 13 Principles of Faith. Second principle, God, the cause of all, is one. This does not mean one as in one of a pair, nor one like a species, nor one as in an object that is made up of many elements, nor as a single simple object that is infinitely divisible. Rather, God is a unity unlike any other possible unity. This is referred to in the Torah. Here Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Some scholars claim the Torah shows evidence of monolatrism in some passages. The argument is normally based on references to other gods, such as the gods of the Egyptians in the book of Exodus. The Egyptians are also attributed powers that suggest the existence of their gods. In Exodus chapter 7 verses 11 to 13, after Aaron transforms his staff into a snake, Pharaoh's sorcerers do likewise. In the ancient Near East, 
The existence of magic was generally believed though the Israelites viewed it as being malign in origin and were forbidden from it. With regard to miracle and prophecy, the Bible commands the Israelites to not follow false prophets and not to refrain from putting them to death. The miracles of false prophets, like those of the Egyptian sorcerers, regarded by the Israelites as a divine test to see if the Israelites love the Lord, their God with all their heart and with all their soul. Jews and traditionalist biblical scholars interpret the mention of other gods in the Bible as references to non-existent entities, which the Israelites were forbidden from worshipping. The Ten Commandments have been interpreted by some as evidence that the Israelites originally practiced monolatrism. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3 reads, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And they argue that the addition of before me at the end of the commandment indicates that not only other gods may exist but that they may be respected and worshipped so long as less than Yahweh. Most scholars agree that the Hebrew Bible describes a monotheistic religion in principle. However, there is evidence that the Israelite people as a whole did not strictly adhere to monotheism before the Babylonian exile in the 6th century BCE. Much of this evidence comes from the Bible itself, which records that many Israelites chose to worship foreign gods and idols rather than Yahweh. During the 8th century BCE, the monotheistic worship of Yahweh in Israel was in competition with many other cults described by the Yarmus faction collectively as Baals. The oldest books of the Hebrew Bible reflect this competition, as in the books of Hosea and Nahum, whose authors lament the apostasy of the people of Israel and threaten them with the wrath of God if they do not give up their polytheistic cults. In Christianity, he argues in verse 5 that, For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, but to us there is but one God. Paul distinguishes between gods that have no authority or have a lesser authority, as there be gods many, and lords many, and the one God who has universal authority, one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, of whom are all things. Some translators of verse 5 put the words gods and lords in quotes to indicate that they are gods or lords only so called. In his second epistle to the Corinthians, Paul refers to the god of this world, which is generally interpreted as referring to Satan or the material things put before God, such as Mani, rather than acknowledging any separate deity from God. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teaches that God the Father, Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost are three distinct beings belonging to one Godhead. All three are united in their thoughts, actions, and purpose, with each having a fullness of knowledge, truth, and power. Latter-day Saints further believe that prayer should be directed to only God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Jeffrey R. Holland has stated, We believe these three divine persons constituting a single Godhead are united in purpose, in manner, in testimony, in mission. We believe them to be filled with the same godly sense of mercy and love, justice and grace, patience, forgiveness, and redemption. I think it is accurate to say we believe they are one in every significant and eternal aspect imaginable except believing them to be three persons. Combined in one substance, Latter-day Saints interpret Jesus a prayer in John chapter 17 verse 11. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, as we are, to refer to the characteristics, attributes and purpose that the Son shares with the Father in the hope that people can someday share in those as well. In Mormonism, being one with God means gaining immortality, perfection, eternal life, and the highest level in his kingdom, as d. Todd Christopherson states, We may become one with God, as Jesus did. Joseph Smith taught that humans can become joint heirs with Christ and thereby inherit from God all that Christ inherits if they are proven worthy by following the laws and ordinances of the gospel. This process of exaltation means that humans can literally become gods through the atonement, thus, God is a term for an inheritor of the highest kingdom of God. 
that allows for the existence of many gods in the future, but only one as ruler over life in this universe. To the extent that monolatry is not considered monotheism, the classification of Mormonism as monolatrous is strongly disputed among Latter-day Saints. Bruce R.